Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Pathfinder Kingmaker. Last time we uh, investigated some of, uh, well not, we, we've begun our investigation of the Jethal's murder uh, and apparently there's somebody trying to turn people against her or something like that. Uh, we found some elves that we had to deal with but um, yeah so now we're back now we've made our way back to Oleg's trading house here. And, um, yeah, we, as you can see, we're, we're exhausted and fatigued, so we need to sleep before we do anything else. So we're going to go ahead and, and nap here. Get the beds ready. There we go. In due time. A nice, safe bed to sleep in. All right. Hey, you guys doing all right? Svetlana? How's life in the trading post these days? Much better than it was under the Stag Lord. I'm not sure what we would have done if not for you and your wise decisions, Your Grace. My husband is a reserved man, unlikely to express his true feelings, so I'd like to express my sincere gratitude on behalf of us both. Cool. Cass Cressel, you're still here. So, a bright day to you. All the best. I don't know why, but Cressel's voice acting reminds me of, like, early voice acting in games maybe I mean maybe it's the quality of the mic or something but like I don't know it's very nostalgic sounding to me how are things going in the trading post oh like scratches his head we're doing all right I'd say I could even say we're doing pretty well thanks to your wise decisions and protection of your grace mm. yep you know you had me worried for a moment back in the capital I almost thought you were going to double our taxes and make a beggar of me. Nah, I would never do that. Got anything new? Doesn't look like it. That's fine. Falcon, why are you here and not at your, um, your post? Oh, of Transmutations and Bodily Poisons, Volume 3. Here you are, Boken. Boken's eyes glisten. Just what I need. I wonder where I got that from. I'm there. I'm not sure. All right, where are these uh, paladins of Shellen? Where are they at? Let me at them. Tiger. Let's just see you're still here playing around. No. Are they not here? At Oleg's trading post. I do what I Are they like outside? Ah. I snuck in. Hello. Save it. Fredrero. A middle-aged man in polished shiny armor turns to you. His beard and hair are impeccably styled, and an expression of reserved politeness sits frozen on his face, as his piercing gray eyes watch everything attentively. Baron Agronak, what an honor to meet you in person. I am Fradiro Sinet, a paladin of the most illustrious Shellen from the Eternal Rose Order. Fradero looks at Valerie. There you are, Valerie. How many years has it been since we saw each other? I'm so happy that the years I've been erased the divine bliss written upon your radiant face. Yeah, that's not, not how I'd describe it. Valerie nods to Senate coldly. Greetings. I'm glad to see you in good health, Fredero. Eh, I think you should talk to Valerie alone. Tell me, Fredero, why are you here? You are from the Eternal Rose Order, right? Where are you planning to go? Why are you here? You're from the Eternal Rose Order, right? Exactly. I once guarded works that showed Shellen's blessing. Works of art, beauty, and love. But that's a path for young and energetic paladins and priests. Now I become a mentor in the Order. Many servants of Shellen, who now guard her creations, were brought up by me. And I'm sure Valerie would have surpassed them all had she not left our ranks. You knew her as a girl? Tell me about her. He smiles pensively. Do I possess the words to describe the Chosen of Shellen? Don't look at me like that. 
I'm not the only one who believes it. A special role has been prepared for this girl in the ranks of the Eternal Rose's followers. I'm sure you've noticed Valerie's greatest virtue. She's impeccably loyal to whatever or whomever she serves. Her father did the right thing in sending his daughter into Shellen's embrace, and Valerie's departure from the Order was just an unfortunate mistake of youth. I'm sure she regrets her, her desperate mistake. Driven by hurt feelings and rash judgment, only shame and pride have kept her from admitting it. Her true place is in the radiance of Gloria Shellen. My departure wasn't a mistake. It fixed someone else's mistake, which caused me to waste a few years of my life. Hmm. Where are you planning to... Why are you here? The paladin looks right at you. As I mentioned in my letter, my goal is to return Valerie to Sir Shellen's grace. Several years ago, a terrible mistake was made. She, whose fate was determined before she was born, decided to resist her calling. I would appeal to, she or to Valerie's mind and remind her of her duty. You speak as though I am incapable of understanding where my duty lies. You have given me much cause for doubt. And where are you planning to go? When Valerie joins my entourage, we will travel west to the borders of Patax. There, a new temple to my divine patron is being built. The temple devoted to the goddess of beauty. I wish I could see such grandeur. One of the new orders of Shellen will occupy the temple. The Order of Prisms. Their zeal in serving the goddess will be good for Valerie. She has much to unlearn if she expects to return to Shellen's favor and the respect of her brothers in faith. You can barely hear Valerie's voice. I'm so tired of orders from those I despise. I think you should talk to Valerie alone. Don't go, Your Grace. My intentions are known to all. Valerie, I have come to return you to, your, to our faith. Our? Now you imagine that not only do I want to serve Shellen, but now I have faith in her too. Rodero shakes his head. I don't recognize you, Valerie. What is this tone you address me with? I remember what politeness and respect you showed your elders. We held you up as an example for other novices. Valerie raises her chin ever so slightly. I'm only repaying your courtesy and kind, Fredero. If you so easily ascribe to me thoughts and aspirations that I do not possess, then I can be as liberal to a judge of your behavior. Valerie, don't go steamed. Don't get so steamed up. At this pace, we'll come to blows before we settle this disagreement. Watch your tongue, Fredero. You're on my lands. You respect my subjects. I oh, won't interfere yet. Keep quiet. My beautiful Valerie, as rash as ever. I was hoping these intervening years you spent away from the Order might have cooled your temper, temper but uh, and brought you some wisdom about the mistakes you made as a novice. As for my return to the church, which you so bluntly insist upon, Valerie puts her chin up. Please, Fredero, spare me your wordy speeches. The day I walked out the convent gates, I made a decision I'm not going to change. I'm never returning to the Eternal Rose Order. I'm never going back to serving Shellen. Whatever nonsense you started with your letter, let's put an end to it once and for all. Fredero studies Valerie's face for a long time. His eyes turn steel gray. I don't believe my ears. I expected to see repentance, Valerie. Repentance for your foolish choices. Repentance for the pain you've caused your family and all those who relied on you. But instead I see a proud renegade who dares to resist the will of the goddess and who would defy me, the one who labored to bring you up and teach you. Hmm. I have to admit, you're somewhat right. Lindsay stops under Valerie's glare and moves away apprehensively. Red spots start to appear on Valerie's cheeks and she catches her breath with some difficulty. I am not in the least bit surprised by your words, Fredero. You have always been deaf to anything that goes against your beliefs. I'm not Shellen's chosen. I'm not a god's toy created to entertain the whimsical goddess. I'm not. Quiet. Quiet before you bring her wrath upon you. How dare you, who is bestowed with celestial beauty, so insolently reject such gifts that others can only dream about. Your fate is already decided. Laid out as fine carpet before you. Enough. 
I didn't come here to listen to a spoiled child speak out of turn, but only to bring you home, and I will take you by the ear and drag you all the way to the Order's Convent, if that's what it takes. I think we all need to calm down a little. One more word, Senate, and your head will be decorating the nearest fence. I think we all need to calm down here a little. Valerie interrupts you. She's almost screaming. What you call home, Fredero, was my prison. My home is here, in these lands for which the Baron and I have fought and shed our blood. Here, beside the one I vowed to serve, and whom I shan't leave until I die. Here in the Stolen Lands, where for the first time I could decide for myself where I belong and what I believe. Valerie's voice grows soft, almost like a hissing snake. Take your people, Fredero, and go back to the Eternal Rose Abbey. And if you've the nerve to claim I'm Shellen's chosen, well, know that your precious goddess should have chosen her trinkets more carefully. Red Arrow goes white as a sheet. How dare you? Keep quiet. Red Arrow looks Valerie in the eye. The paladin's hand is on his weapon. If you insist on standing equal to Shellen's paladin, answer for your words now. If you have a drop of dignity left, you won't deny me satisfaction. Valerie looks at the enraged paladin fearlessly. Oh, so now I'm suddenly an independent person in your eyes? Finally? Well then, I shall agree to this duel with indescribable pleasure. Agronak, you shall be my second. As you say, Valerie, what will you have me do? I won't let you kill each other right in front of me. Don't be silly, Valerie. Apologize for your words and we'll part in peace. <laughs> um... I would kind of want to say number two. I won't let you kill each other right in front of me. Fredera doesn't look at you. So intently is he burning Valerie with his eyes. Forgive me, your grace, but I'm not leaving until I've taught this impulsive girl a lesson. I was hoping that Valerie's good sense would prevail over her insolence, but alas, the situation unfolds otherwise. Valerie shows herself a faint smile. Don't worry, Agronak. This... Misunderstanding will only take a few minutes. Then Sir Sinnott will pick up the shreds of his pride and spare us his presence forever. Mm. Alright, let's get this over with. What would you have me do? The second's responsibilities include in observing the fight, mediating in the duel, and should the circumstances require, declaring the final verdict. Valerie reaches for a weapon. I think here is good enough. Step away, Agonac. I don't wish to hit you by accident. Let's see what you le Let's see whether you learned anything more than insolence from these mercenary friends. One of my squires will be my second. Would everyone please clear the dueling grounds and do not interfere until a winner has been determined. Good luck, Valerie. Hope you're properly equipped for this. What are you doing here? Oh, hey, hello, Alec. Don't worry, good master. We'll settle our argument quickly and do no harm to your trading post. So, Valerie, are you ready? I am, Fredero. Let your second start the countdown. Let's begin. Participants, please ready your weapons and assume your positions. Three, two, two attack! Victory. To victory. Okay, so let's see what we've got going on here. Though for Darrow Senate. Oh, nothing. We have no idea. Great. Okay, well, what have I got? Surely he's not um evil. Ambassadors particularly ruthless against those who have harmed her or her allies. It's a good moment to attack those. Vindictive smite. This didn't work. Aw. I must be doing it wrong. I think he has to hit me first. Challenge evil. Surely he's not evil. That wouldn't work either. Solo tactics. Sure. Do that. Gonna turn that off. Let us strike as one. 
Oh my god, she can't hit him. Holy gods. Divine favor? That's cheating. Do you have anything else? Any other abilities? Uh -oh. What's this? Okay, let's turn this on then. Do not falter. I think she's gonna lose. Okay, yeah, dude, I get it. Oh, great. Now my armor's been sundered. That's an attack, right? Nope. Stay behind me. I think he has to actually do damage. Two natural ones. Valerie's about to get her ass kicked here. All right. Let us strike as one. Hmm. Weird, it didn't go off the first time. Do not falter. Doesn't seem like it's mattering, though. Onward. Just trying everything at this point. I can't hit him. I can't keep this up much longer. Stay behind me. Rodero steps back and sheets his weapon. Looks like everything's in its place, doesn't it? You could be however you could be however insolent to whomever you wanted, as long as you were considered as a girl, Valerie. But now you have to answer for all the stupid things you said in pride or heated moments. I'm satisfied with the outcome of this duel. I see no reason to linger here, upsetting the owners of this trading post and the Baron. With great sadness, I will continue my way without Valerie, whom from now on has no right to return to the Order of the Eternal Rose due to her transgressions. I will bother you no longer. My regards, your grace, Valerie. Redera stops short. Farewell. Sucks that she lost, but I don't see how I could win that. Dear gods, your face, Valerie. What? Is there something? Valerie touches the wound across her face. And looks at the blood on her fingers, more baffled than scares. Scared. For Darrow did it, that scoundrel. Valerie shakes her head. Strange, I do not remember receiving this blow. Not at all. Yeah, I mean, he was using a flail. There's no way that makes that mark on her face. Because it does have a spike, so maybe it's possible? But unlikely. Highly unlikely. She touches the wound again, winces, and finally waves it off. It's, it's nothing. I don't even feel any pain. Only fatigue. Save your pity for someone who is truly wounded. And I just need to rest. And wash myself clean after those conversations about Shellen. Okay. She's now Valerie the Scarred. Have you guys, uh... How do you guys beat him? He seemed like he had... Much higher AC than I could possibly get past. Wait, where is it? Oh, uh, is this... What is all this junk? He has a 33 AC. I mean, if I turned all that stuff off, I would have been at a... 6, 10, plus 10. So even... Yeah. I could only ever beat him with natural 20s. Maybe if my AC was higher, too, then maybe we could go back. He had a plus 20, though. Yeah, so there's no way I, there was no way I beat him. He has plus 6 strength and a plus 9 attack bonus. Where mine's only plus 3. So, yeah, I mean, he was probably much higher level, I'm guessing. I don't know. Do you guys ever win that fight? Maybe if you buffer up beforehand. Excuse me. If you buffer up beforehand. I don't know. Okay, anyway, um, talk to Valerie at the capital. The duel is over and Valerie, oh, poor Valerie, her poor face. I hope once we're back at the capital, she will find a way to heal that terrible gash. 
investigate my death, return to the capital and talk to Ennio. It seems it was Ennio, the merchant who had the dagger, who drew both us and the elves into this story. We should return to the capital and have a little chat with him. To begin, Boken requires an alchem alchemical treatise that holds the recipe for a wondrous potion. He suggested looking for the book in magical shops and searching through the belongings of other alchemists. For example, he recommended paying a visit to Old Bildame. I don't think that's who we got it from. Maybe we got it from the wizard, uh, Bartholomew. That was the name, right? And every time I hear alchemist, I'm just, I just get bummed out that we can't get Jubilost. It's really, uh, really sad. I like Jubilost. Okay. So from here, we're going to head over to the Tenebrous Depths. So let's go. Take 18 hours. We'll probably have to rest on the road. I wonder if this is still considered the outskirts out here. I'm curious what's here. I need to catch my breath. Hey, some berries. It looks like this might be here. Be nice. Oh no. Don't you think? Would be nice. Let's get to the depths first. Okay. Powerful magic hides these ancient ruins from the prying eyes of curious adventurers. Only those who have been personally invited by the master of the place may gain entrance. Escaping it is an entirely different question. History remembers many great heroes of old whose valiant tales mysteriously ended in these parts. Neat. Let's go ahead and rest first. Uh, manage. All right. Are you good at anything else? Do you have anybody good at hunting? No. Alright, I guess you're the hunter. You'd be the cook. You'd be the camouflager. Guard. You'll help her cook. And you'll help guard. Or not cook, but uh, hunt. Uh, what do we want for dinner? Maybe some jeweled rice. And yeah, I don't need moving the speed. Got no onion soup. Do you like my onion soup? Sweet pancakes. Add more movement speed. Shepherd pie. Let's have some shepherd's pie. There we go. Begin resting. Jaythal and the rivers of blood. Jaythal and the broken hearts. No, she prefers ripping them out over breaking them. If you must mention me in your scribbles, would you care to replace my name? I've no wish to be associated with cheap novels. Very good. All right, our kingdom's got something going on, but we are busy. We are busy. All right. Oh, it seems lovely here. Got a waterfall, birds, got the rainbow, the music's going. There's a big dragon. A lovely place. It's a blue dragon at that, which we just we we had just killed a blue dragon, so no worrying. Or maybe it's not blue. Is that blue? Looks blue. It looks like maybe it's like a silvery blue though. In due time. Spend the night here. Hail there, dragon. It's a silver dragon, okay. Silver, the silver dragon stares at you for a long time, unblinking. Maybe it's just a trick of the light, but you think you see a heavy mercury teardrop rolled from its pearly eyes. Hmm. 
You have answered my call, Protector of Galarian. I will have you know, no one has ever returned from these caves alive. Many valiant heroes before you have sacrificed their lives to bring victory one step closer. I have not forgotten their feet, their feats, nor will I forget yours. Uh, hi, yeah, hi. Uh, who are you? What do you want to know? I will hide nothing from you. Who are you? My name is Zillerin. I am a loyal servant of Apsu. Thousands of years ago, my god appointed me to watch over this place. Where deep in the depths there hides a great evil. I knew at once the repulsive smell of the beast, but it took me centuries to locate the egg that he left. All this time I've stood guard here, looking for a way to destroy the spawn before it hatched and brought immeasurable sufferings to those who dwell upon the land. Apsu. Who's that? I think uh I think Tartuk told us about this guy, didn't he? In his dragon story? Oh, or the dragon casts a pearly, pearly, pearly skyward glance. <laughs> oh, Apsu. He is more ancient than all the gods whose names you know. He is the maker of all, who stands at the origin of the multiverse. Few mortals remember him, but we metallic dragons still praise him in our prayers. It's just me, or are you really sad? <laughs> so many heroes passed here. The noblest souls of Galarian, selfless protectors of their homeland, ready to sacrifice their lives to save it from the spawn of the beast. I remember each and every one, striding fearlessly down into the darkness. Almost none of them have returned, and it's all my fault. The dragon lowers his huge head. True repentance can be heard in his thunderous voice. I made a mistake, and they paid dearly for it. You see, I never understood the true nature of the monster. For many years, I and the heroes who answered my call would wander these dungeons, thinking that the monster larva was the greatest threat. It was only when I found the egg and touched its shell that I realized the spawn had turned the entire dungeon into its nest. Madness, mortal. Darkness and madness are the monster's sword and shield its food and the material that its shell is made of. The heroes I summoned here descended into madness. They lost their minds and the spawn of the beast fed upon their insanity. Somehow, I avoided the same fate. They went down into the darkness, driven by the noblest of intentions, and were rewarded only with eternal torment. What are you doing here? I am guarding the spawn of Rovagug that sleeps in the caves beneath us. I summon heroes to help me defeat it. It is a long and joyless vigil, but I believe that it will one day be over. Perhaps you yourself are the hero who will finally achieve this long-awaited victory. Thank you. The truth is the least I can give you for what you f for for your feet. You leave my feet alone. What feet do you expect of me? An egg laid by an by the abominable Rovagug has cursed this dungeon for thousands of years. The larva of the beast will destroy half of the river kingdoms if it hatches. The shell that surrounds it is a labyrinth of darkness and madness, inhabited by thousands of its former victims. Hundreds of heroes perished as they sought a way through it. But now I know where the egg is and the path to it is almost clear. Almost. What blocks the way to the monster? Oh, that is the saddest and scariest part. The spawn of the beast feeds on nightmares, and its very shell is made of madness. The caves around me are filled with insanity, and has flooded them with an ocean of darkness, which distorts the very nature of the multiverse. Heroes who approach, the gr approach grow mad or perish in a great suffering. This gives the egg its strength. The monster feeds on their terror and pain. Neither alive nor dead, but tormented eternally by their worst nightmares, these brave heroes still wander the labyrinth, find and destroy four of their strongest, and the power of the beast's madness will weaken. Then I'll be able to crack open the shell. We must destroy the monster before it hatches and grows strong. The fallen priestess, the weary traveler, the wicked chanter, 
the captor and his horrifying slave. Deliver them into peace, and the path to the enemy will be opened. Why don't you kill these four yourself? The dragon's body shudders. It would seem that the thought of what hides in the depths can chill even the soul of a mighty dragon. The egg is surrounded by an ever-shifting labyrinth of insanity and darkness. This insanity, which the larva emits, is capable of subduing even the most valiant of heroes. I have ventured down before, and it was only by a miracle that I slipped the fate that, that, was, that has ensnared so many other brave heroes. If I tried to vanquish it alone, then sooner or later it would devour me, drink my soul, and add me to the horde of nightmares that guard it. Who, who would be able to destroy me then? It's like a Gandalf touching the ring of power sort of thing. Thus, I continue summoning heroes to this place. Many of those who answered my call turn their backs and return to their lives once they discover how slim are their chances of victory, and I do not blame them. But my vigil is nearing its end. The hour of the last battle with the monster draws near. If you can manage to weaken its shell, I can crack it, and we will finish it together. Tell me about the fallen priestess. Her name is Tioko Sakama Sakasama. She led a party of adventurers here, noblest heroes and truest friends. Together, they defeated many foes, but they never faced anything like this. Tioko once served Lemashtu. Then this brave and wise woman recognized how disgusting her patron was and gathered the strength to leave her service, finding shelter in the hands of Desna. Alas, Lamashtu is called the Mistress of Insanity for a reason. The labyrinth tricked Tioko's mind and stole from her Desna's protections. When next her reason failed, she returned to Lamashtu and sacrificed her friends to her cruel mistress, one by one. Ever since, she has lurked in the depths seeking new gifts for her mistress. Alas, the last embers of good in her soul have long faded. She has become a monster. The beast has consumed her utterly. The weary traveler. He was a gnome by the name. He was a gnome named Balzess. What a name! <laughs> he was quite a famous traveler, a pathfinder on three continents. But bleaching gives no quarter to his people. There came a day when he grew tired of new roads. When he heard my call, he came, knowing it would be his final adventure. He did not anticipate victory, but hoped at least for an honorable death. Alas, the darkness reached out to him from the abominable spawn of the beast, and refused him even that. An aura of madness filled the gnome with delusions of grandeur, and transported his mind into the marvelous fey world, where he sits a godlike ruler. He has become a frightening, dangerous, and pathetic caricature of his former self, a king without a kingdom. The god of a rotten soul. Immersed is in sweat dreams, or immersed. What? <laughs> Immersed. Immersed in sweet dreams. I think I said sweat dreams too. Oh goodness. Immersed in sweet dreams, he wanders the halls, barking orders at the wandering monsters. A sad sight to behold. His death will bring him not only peace, but only restore the dignity he's lost. I. That's a that says also, by the way. <laughs> Not only. Tell me about the captor. The captor is the greatest wizard I have ever managed to talk into visiting this gloomy place. I had high hopes for him, and so I turned a blind eye to the darkness in his soul. I expect he was already insane before he even came here. Nothing else could explain his indifference towards suffering. But he was strong and confident, and managed to get quite close to the spawn. Very close, before he met his end. Be warned that the captain does not appear alone. He is always accompanied by a disgusting beast that he summoned from beyond the world. The two are firmly bound in death and can revive each other, so they must both be killed at once. Tell me about the wicked chanter. She is the dungeon's greatest mystery. In the long history of my vigil here, she has but recently appeared. Heroes who set off into the depths began there to encounter something quite strange. A woman in rags, who wanders the darkness accompanied by a horde of monsters. 
She is known to announce her arrival in song. She sings as she hunts and sings as she kills. The monster of the dark serve her loyally and faithfully, protecting her to their dying breath. I know not who the chanter is. Many brave heroines have disappeared into the dungeon, but none possess such control over monsters. I only know that the chanter is more insane than the three other nightmares of the dungeon combined. The terror she carries with her knows no mercy. She must be defeated. The feat I ask of you is most dangerous, mo almost certainly suicidal. If you agree, I want you to understand what you're getting into. Alright, can I rest here? Of course. My table is set for everyone. Eat and rest as much as you like. Down below in the darkness, you will have to be at your very best. I need supplies. Of course. But forgive me, my treasures are not endless, and I cannot provide you with free supplies. If you require the aid of a priest, select the scroll and I will read it for you. But be careful. Down in the labyrinth, you're on your own. Do not go into the depths without a servant to the higher forces in your party. Yeah, I don't need higher... What are you talking about? I'm sure my party's fine. Ooh, Mithra full plate plus two. Isn't that better than this? It is. Isn't it cheaper as well than this was? Pretty sure it is. A wand of heroism with how many charges? 50 charges. That's pretty good. That'd be a good buy. Other than that, it looks like it's pretty... A wand of fireball with six charges. That's pretty cheap, a thousand gold. How much money do I have? I only have 9,000. Oh, I thought I had more than that. I kind of do want this wand of uh, fireball. I'm gonna buy it. I have to go. Okay, I guess the question is, do we want to even like try it with this party? I mean, this isn't a very strong party, but... Hmm. We could at least try and clear the first floor, maybe. Like, I don't think this party's the one to go far in it. But we came all this way. We might as well take a look. Who's honest guy down here? A tall, bulky fellow with a shaved head studies you closely, paying special attention to your equipment. He grins. Hello, my friend. Do you want to look your finest? I have the best wares and fairest prices in all of the Tenebrous Depths. Who are you? I am an honest guy. The lad strikes his chest proudly with his fist. I stand here honestly, welcoming heroes and seeing them off to their feasts of glory, feats of glory. I honestly collect the gear from the breathless corpses, and I honestly sell it to the next heroes. You freely and calmly admit that you pillage corpses. Forgive me my skepticism, but do you really never do that yourself? No. How dare you? <laughs> you've never taken anything from an enemy you've killed or a dead body you've found? Uh, never. And I never would. I resent the accusation. At least I don't tell passerby, passersby that I am just waiting for the chance to rob their dead bodies. I do it for the greater good. Taking the equipment from defeated enemies is honest. You're taking the you're taking advantage of the situation without doing anything to help. Uh, th th don't change the subject. Why would I? The honest guy gives you a broad smile. There are no buyers here except for you. Why would I not talk to a client? Still, it's not very nice. We put our lives at risk for everyone else. Why, you, while you profit from our misfortune? What if you, what if you say, make someone angry and turn from an honest guy into a dead guy? <laughs> Damn. Uh, forget I asked. Yeah, he's got a point. As you wish. So, are you buying anything? Fair trade is my principle. Does Aurelian allow your pillaging? What could he have a problem with? I'm betraying no one. I attack no one. I just pick up things that belong to no one. And find them new owners. Perfectly honest, isn't it? And besides, that scaly worm would be so bored without me. He never has anyone to talk to. Take a look. Alright, let's see what you've got. Uh... 
Honestly, pretty weak shit, too. Ooh. A Wander Haste with 17 charges? I have suddenly become a fan of wands ever since uh, uh, our Varnhold DLC. But now we've already bought one wand. I'm not made of money, unfortunately. It appears to have been a powerful artifact, but its magic has long since dissipated. Okay. I do what I must. All right. Let's just take a peek. Hmm. That doesn't seem so bad. How curious. I'm off. Curious indeed. Curiouser and curiouser. Already got a chest here. Suspicious. In due time. Well, hey, we've already got something out of this. A helmet. The Gusty Brawler. Gets its wear immunity to fear and damage resistance one to magic. Huh. Give that to you. Beautiful. Cool. Yeah, I already love this. I love these kinds of dungeons. They're so much fun. Like, treasures... One thing I, I'm really looking forward to, to getting to Treasures of the Midnight Isle in our uh, Wrath of the Righteous campaign. So I've never done it in the actual storyline. I've only ever done it in the standalone version. How's the standalone version of this one? Is it... Is it very different um because i know or at least i've read that the treasures of the midnight isles is like a maybe a more expedient version or i don't maybe it's not oh no not where rats i'll scout ahead follow if you dare okay command me I'm gonna start with you so we need to do that and magna blast it Gather that power. Look at it gathering. Their life ends here. Boom. Smoldering ruin. Gonna let it come to us. I hear swarms. I don't like that. Do this. What is this? Dirge of Doom. Okay. Um. Go and put that on yourself. Yeah, we'll do a little bit of buffing while we wait. Ooh, man, that's a big old rat swarm. Alright, is that all you've got? Should kill them all. There's more. Hmm. Oh, another one. They just keep coming. All right. Taste my fury. Dead. Yeah, we don't want to really get in there their way so we're gonna kind of let them keep coming to us it looks like this is the last one here this is going to hurt oh come on all right well now we need to start right. chipping away at him this will hurt I never noticed like they go like flying when you when you hit them the rats. That's interesting. I might as well take everything. I do what I must. 
Interesting. Interesting. Go ahead and disarm that. Done and done. Done and done. Sounds like there's more rats up here. I'm there. It's just like a sound they've got for the zone. Take all that. And always check your uh, your corners and everything. Any uh, any special doors around? I am ready. An alpha Burn. wolf here. Go ahead and blow him up. Good 30 damage there to the Alpha Wolf. Show me who the real Alpha is right here. That uh, were rat. Werewolf, oh boy. Um let's take out the werewolf. Or the the wolf, yeah. We need to take that off of her. I keep saying it and I keep forgetting to do it. Go to that wolf. Lindsay, move up. All right, werewolf, where are you gonna go? Oh, right there. Boom, get out of my way. You ain't nothing. Maybe we just see. I mean, we already knew that trap was there, right? Flames take you. No, sir. Let us strike as one. Striking. You should have run. Oh, that was bad. You can do better than that, my man. Oh, you could do better than that too. Come on, guys, hit that wolf. Can't stop me. There you go, 32 sneak attack damage. Love it. Despicable. Bad. Taste you got this, Canera. Oh my god. Oh my god. Do not falter. This wolf is too strong. Strike. There we go. All right. Ooh. Shock Tongi plus one. Loot skin take. Let's go over here. All right, anything along these walls? This we can probably see by the map too. What kind of directions we're gonna be going? Looks like this is the only one here. All right, disarm this trap. Did as you asked. Okay, I said he's that. The bone fist is giving us a plus one on armor. Gotcha. Okay. Hello. This requires your attention. All right, we got some dire wolves. What's Go ahead and launch so that. 69, nice. Did the smoke here like move as it did its thing? If it did, that's really cool. Uh, probably shouldn't go across the trap. Fire. Oh, come on. Shameful. All right. 
fire them. Can I get in there? Nice. Here comes the dire wolf. Very good. Disarm this for me, please. I don't know. I mean, if this is the... I mean, we might be able to do the next floor, too. This is easy. This is all you've got. Spawn a Rovagug. I'm probably going to get to the end of the uh, whole dungeon. First try. Alright. Make sure there's nothing hidden. Uh, looks like this is the way. Hmm. I'm there. Take that stuff. Okay, there's a door here. All right, lower religion twenty-three. What a bother! What a bother indeed. Hold the five. Damn it. I do what I must. It's always the most frustrating when they could have easily succeeded, but they just rolled super low. Alright, got a couple of werewolves here. A couple of wereboys. Go ahead and let him have it. Gather your power. This is a cool animation. Bang! Man, werewolves are not very strong. Is it? Aha! Hi guys. We'll just back up. Come to me. There's a lot of them. Onwards. Good critical hit there. You deserved it. Oh, I didn't see that guy. Is that a rare rat? Sure is. Okay. Back up. Kill this one. Burn. Boom. You think shield's gonna save you? Let's come over here, help them. You can't Attack. Stop me. Good. Jethal. Advance. Very good. Agronac. Get up there. This will hurt. He should be able to tank these guys. As you guys finish off these guys, if you can. Any last wishes? Okay. So her weapon doesn't. Oh, you son of a bitch! Oh, that's flames take you. Angering. Consider me provoked. Thank God for mirror image, I guess, huh? You should have run. All right, guys. I'm sorry I said that you were weak. Let us strike at one. I'm sorry. All right. This is where I step in. Taste my fury. God damn it. Uh. 
I'm not liking you. Not liking any of you right now. All right, I'm going to try and remember. Don't hold back. Take the necklace off of Lindsay. Take the necklace off of Lindsay. Take that necklace off of Lindsay. Serves you right. I think if I say it enough, it'll happen. Like, I won't have to do it. It'll just happen. <sighs> Go ahead, fire arrow this at him. Missed concealment. Despicable. Ah, oh, Jesus. This will hurt. <laughs> Twenty damage, though. That's good. Onwards. That's good. You deserved it. Also, that's good. Come on. This Hit him. Going to no hurt. concealment. There we go. You. That was actually. I'll stop that. Stop that right now. Uh, d -d 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 type. And where's our wand of cure light wounds? Take one of those. We take a whole bunch of them. How many charges have we got left? Nine. It's not the best thing, but it'll help out a little bit. Eh, that's good enough. Unless she keeps burning. Go ahead and take everything. Ooh. B Bombardier's Vest and Vast Intelligence plus two. Ah, Jubilost. Plus two bonus attacks with bombs and similar weapons. It's a similar weapon to a bomb. Take the necklace off. Oh, my God. I mean, it wasn't really doing much for us, was it? Yeah, it's only when they're flat-footed. It'd be good for maybe like knock knock, or maybe um, uh, Magar if you know he becomes a companion. I can't remember if he becomes a companion or not. Like I think he does, but all right, intelligence. You have intelligence, right? Yeah, you do. There you go. Plus two to your intelligence. That's a good find. Is it locked? Done and done. Sure was. Interview with the weary traveler. This ragged issue of the popular magazine Absalom Reporter features a gnome on the cover, colorfully dressed and smiling. The artist drew him in a haughty pose. His foot rests on the skull of a great reptile, and he proudly holds aloft a gem of the size of his own head. In bold letters, the caption reads. An exclusive interview with the famous treasure hunter, Barandabal Zesselwand. Sir Zesselwand? <laughs> what a formality. Please, just call me Ball. All right, Ball. You've recently returned from a long voyage to, Ger to Garon. Well, not all of Garon. I mostly spent my time in Assyrian. And Katapesh. Making short trips to Geb, Nex, and Jalmere. What was the aim of your expedition? That's a fine question. As, Daz as Desna is my witness, I've asked myself many times, what the devil made me go there? Especially each time I miraculously managed to extract extricate myself from yet another predicament. But you know what? The answer to the question is quite irrelevant. Yes, that's right. Let's say that initially I only intended to confirm a certain hypothesis regarding the architecture of pyramids. But before I even reached them, I was lucky to awaken a sphinx who had been sleeping in the sand for centuries and escaped with my skin intact. I discussed philosophy with an oracle of Wajet, witnessed the rise of the tribe of the Triple Sun, tasted new wine dishes, or tasted nine new dishes, four drinks and two kinds of tobacco. The pyramid hypothesis turned out to be utter nonsense in the end, but at the moment... I learned of this, I was already busily investigating the atrocities of a secret cult that was attempting to, re to resurrect the remains of some ancient monster in the middle of, of Sothis. As you see, 
the nominal aim of the voyage scarcely matters, matters at all. Forgive the blunt question, but rumor has it that despite your life of adventure, even you can avoid the eternal bane of gnomes, the bleaching. What nonsense. <laughs> bleaching? Me? That's nothing more than the wishful thinking of those determined to be my adversaries. The southern sun bleached my hair, and as soon as they caught, my, caught sight of this, the rumors started flying. Make no mistake, if anything kills me, it will be another adventure, and decidedly not a loss of the will of the live. That's good to hear. So what are your plans for the future? I'll go north, to the river kingdoms. I've been having very strange dreams lately. I won't share all the details yet to maintain the intrigue, but if even a part of them is true, then when I return, you'll be printing a tale of incredible adventure. Thank you for the interview, and good luck to you on your coming journey. Thank you as well. Ah, yes. The Fearless Pathfinder. I see something. Oh, guys, stop. Halt. Thank you. I did as you asked. All right, loot them. Take all their stuff. Follow if you dare. Okay. I don't know how I don't know if it like twists and winds all the way around or not. This episode's getting a little long, but I would like to get to the end of the first floor. Before we Ooh, a greater werewolf. Let's save. I'm glad you called. We'll wanna use you on the greater werewolf. Gather your power. Hopefully it hits, because I think the Greater Werewolf is actually a severe threat. Enjoy your final moments. Of course. Of course. I'm trying to think of what I want to do. Let's just move her up. Alright, Agronac. Go kill this wolf. Nice. What wolf is this? Shoot him. I'll fight if I have to. Nice. All right, Jethal. Move up. Advance. You can't charge him. You can charge him though. So we've taken out all the wolves. So it's just the greater rare wolf. And there's a reason why he's surrounded by three weak wolves, I think. I think he's going to be much stronger. 34 damage. Um, ear piercing scream. Ooh, he almost failed that. Charge him. Good damage, good damage. Let's do a magic missile on him. Alright, as long as one of you hits, we're fine. Unworthy. Close. Got him. Uh, Hell yeah. Alright, what do you have on him? Oh. I was actually kind of expecting him to have something. Alright, well. We are suffering from heavy encumbrance. In due time. Skin you. All right, so this is going down to the second floor. I'm gonna go down there. I don't okay. remember if there's a portal on each floor or if it's like at a certain, I, I'm pretty sure there's a portal system. I think that's what that magical artifact was outside that was broken. Was, but um, I, I think it's not on every floor. Oh, but maybe it is. Never mind. Yeah, I think we could, we might be able to keep going in the next episode. I don't know. It was getting a little, well, I guess it was just that one fight, really, with the were-rat. Oh, I guess it's just a, a random portal. All right, well, we will go sell all this junk down here real quick. And then, uh, yeah, next episode, I guess we'll check out the next floor. We're here. We're doing all right. We didn't spend too many resources on the first floor. So I think we'll be fine. 
moving on to the second one. Take a look at your wares. Go ahead and sell all this junk. Alright. Is there anything? I don't think we need this stuff. Probably never going to use that. Or that. Or that. Yeah, get that money. We do need it. I'll keep those things. I don't know if we need this. I mean, I don't think we're going to have another alchemist. I mean, I suppose we could make Knock Knock into an, an alchemist. Assuming we find Knock Knock. I don't know if we do. Yeah, we might miss him like we missed Jubilost. But, um... Yeah, we'll hold on to it for now. As for this stuff... Yeah, I mean... I don't think we'll need any more Cloaks of Resistance plus one. But... Don't want to... I, I just don't want to get rid of it yet. Bit of a hoarder. Alright. That's it for this one, guys. Until next time, I hope you all have a wonderful day. And I'll catch you later.